Yeah, a um, little bit of pressure in there. God damn. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, if you're an Eagles fan, well, congratulations. Um, at where I live here in Lancaster County, I'm pretty sure everybody's got green on. Not myself, because I don't really care, but whatever. It is what it is. Congratulations if you're an Eagles fan. Um, so, anyhow, as you can see, we have Caitlin in the garage. I moved Moby Dick out in front of the garage, and we have Veronica out in the yard again. So basically what that is, is I want to show you guys something tonight on Caitlin with our whole head gasket thing. This is actually something you guys had suggested. I actually never heard of it before that, honestly. Um, and what that is, is this block tester. Um, it's supposed to be shitty out tomorrow, so I moved Moby Dick out in front of the garage, so we'll take that to work tomorrow. So... This is called Block Tester. I know a bunch of you had commented about it. Um, you can get these from like Napa, Advance, pretty much any auto parts store. Um, I got it from the Amazon, two days, like 36 bucks. So with this BT500 Block Tester, they all seem about the same. Um, basically, I'll just read you the side of the box here. Tests in seconds for exhaust gases present in the cooling system caused by blown head gaskets. Crack heads are blocked, warp head are blocked, ceiling surface, and broken head studs are bolts. So, I'll open it up real quick. Basically, um, you guys had commented about it, so I looked it up on the, uh, on the line there. And basically, we'll start the truck, we'll stick this little turkey baster looking thing. So, like I was saying, what we will do is we'll start the truck, we'll fill this block tester up to this fluid line with this blue fluid. Stick it down in the radiator cap there. We'll stick this little jobby in there. And basically we're gonna be drawing any gases out of that radiator and out of the fluid. Um, the level of the radiator is low enough that we shouldn't be sucking any fluid into our tester. Um, and I, I guess it works off of carbon monoxide. So it said that the blue, blue fluid should turn to like a yellow or a green color. And they said, you know, like the worse the leak is, the quicker it's gonna happen. So I'm putting one on here and it's going to be pretty quick because we are blowing coolant, um, which I'll show you here in a second. Uh, it's just coming out of the overflow of the expansion tank. So I just put, been putting coolant in it every couple days and trying not to run the truck too awful hard. Um, you might be wondering, why, why don't you just drive Moby Dick? Well, because I like driving. Wintertime, remote start, shit like that. Yeah, convenience is a hell of a thing. But I probably shouldn't be running it. But if when we do do the head gasket, we're going to do it right. I'm going to contact the local machine shop, see if we can get the head decked and all that kind of stuff. So without further ado and more talking, we're going to fill this puppy up and start the truck and see what we got. Oh, if you, I don't know how well you guys will be able to make it out, but it's kind of wet down there. Um, basically, basically this coolant expansion tank it's been getting up high enough that it's coming down over this overflow here and then it just kind of expels down there on the inner fender well it's a shame they don't give you like a tube or make it so you could put a tube on it and you know just send it right to the ground but it is what it is we're living with it um really my big hold up with not doing the head gasket is the garage is a fucking mess like it's been for a while well it's been like that for a long time, um, and I just need to get focused on cleaning it up. So I can't put the truck in here sideways. I have done that before, and it does work, but I can't do it right now with the amount of shit in here. And it's chilly enough out that I don't want to have to do this with the garage door open, you know, depending on the weather, all that kind of stuff. We'll start here by filling our block tester with our very fancily named test fluid. All right, there's that. Son of a bitch. Got our test fluid there. Got our little bulb. The metal check valve goes up top. All right, and uh, we'll start the truck and see what happens.
you guys would have seen in the video there, um, you stick this down in the radiator, you want the radiator level low enough that you're not going to be sucking fluid up into it. I don't know how well I really described that when we did it. So step this in the radiator cap, kind of make a seal. You're going to draw the gases up with this, I don't even know what the hell you call it. But anyway, you do that and then as you would have seen over time, our fluid did change to a greenish color. Um, Honestly, I would like to have something with a little bit more, uh, less opinionated results. I mean, you could say, hey, yeah, we got it to turn colors and it turned green like the instructions say. But it's, you know, like when I pull it out, because sometimes when you do it, you squeeze this thing and it wouldn't expand back out, I guess, because we weren't getting gases out at that point. Um, so I'd cock it and... Just, you know, let it reinflate, wait a minute, and then do it again. So, you know, did I get some exhaust in there when we did that? I, I like the idea of the tool. Um, it does work, it seems, but it just doesn't seem like... I wouldn't, I wouldn't use this to be 100% certain. All our other signs indicate that we have a head gasket issue. So this is just another thing to say, hey, the fluid turned green. It didn't stay that bright vibrant blue color so is this worth the money um probably i mean it's 36 dollars. you could use it on anything uh before we had put that uh, what the hell was that shit called before we put that stuff in moby dick to you know that head gasket sealer we could have used this to find out if we had a problem or at least the beginning of a problem now the other thing I don't know about with a diesel, you know, if you're running 70 mile an hour down the highway, we're seeing 8 to 10 pounds of boost with that 467 charger. Um, a gas vehicle that is not turbocharged, or any vehicle, whoop, any vehicle I should say that is not turbocharged, that's the conditions you're going to be getting. I mean, you, yes, your cylinder pressures will be higher when you're running it as opposed to idling, but I don't know that the boost is as big of a factor. Now this thing, we lay into it to go past somebody, we're gonna shoot up to 30, 35 pounds of boost. Um, I think with this charger max I was seeing when I had the, the actual boost gauge in it, it would go all the way up to 50. That's gonna be a lot different scenario than just sitting in here in the garage idling. So I think if there was a way you could have this on there and then be running a truck, you'd really see a difference. Um, that's kind of my opinion. Um, so, does it work? Yes. Is it the best? No. But it's just another checkbox we can mark off and say, hey, we're seeing this. And I've talked to a buddy of mine. He's had the head gaskets go. He used to own a six liter, so he should know about head gaskets. Um, and he said that even when he had his Cummins and he blew a head gasket in, he was getting the same kind of coolant issues we're saying. So I also went through and explained, I don't know that I really prefaced before I did it, but I put the truck up in high idle for a little bit. So here's how you guys do that on a fourth gen if you don't know already. So on the fourth gen trucks, this is at least true with the 10 to 12 trucks. So I would like to think that Dodge or Ram, whatever you want to call them, would have kept it the same. I don't know about the earlier ones for the newer fourth gens, but if your truck doesn't go in the high idle automatically, which, you know, depending on the temperature outside, it usually does, what you're going to do, you're just going to turn cruise control on, hit set, that'll bring the RPMs up to like a 1,000, and then you can hold resume to raise them up, I think you can go all the way to 1,500, and hold set to go all the way back down to a thousand again. So let, let me show you. The truck's idling, what's that, about 700 RPM. We're gonna hit on on the cruise control, set. And that's gonna raise up to about a thousand, 1100. So then we'll just hit and hold the resume button. I think it'll stop about 1500. So we can high idle up there if we really wanted to. Then we're gonna push set, you know, just your plus and your minus. Push and hold that. Turn 
take it back down to thousand and if we hit the on off button back to our normal idle so in conclusion we use the block tester it turned colors um we got a head gasket problem i mean that's just another checkbox marked off there's something going on there that it shouldn't be so you learn how to do that you learn how to put the truck up in high idle i hope you enjoyed the video if you do did please hit that like button subscribe to the channel and i'll catch you guys on the next one get out in your garage get to working on your truck